Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tehachapi Loop in Illinois Model Railroad, modeling the Tehachapi Loop and the entire Southern Pacific Railroad between Bakersfield and Mojave. I want to thank uh, everyone on the Facebook page and now the new Instagram page for Tehachapi Loop in Illinois. We have close to 1,300 followers on the Facebook page, which has been up for a couple of years now, which is just tremendous. And although I didn't have time to do a Facebook Live with everybody, I thought it would be fun to do kind of a narrative video. Uh, today, one of the fun things that I like about this layout is I don't model a particular year. I actually model uh, a decade, 1985 to 1995, which gives me, based on the changes in the railroad industry, uh, a little bit of uh, creative license to model certain things. For example, uh, today we're gonna do kind of a late 80s uh, decade. You'll see trains rolling by from that era, so you'll still see uh, cabooses. Uh, you'll see certain motive power, uh, and more importantly, not see certain motive power on the layout. Uh, you'll s still see Southern Pacific's flashing gyro lights, for example, that they had on all their locomotives. You'll see their bay window cabooses. And then on the Santa Fe, uh, even though they were very pretty, you will not be seeing the red and silver war bonnets. You'll be seeing all blue and yellow uh, locomotives, again, appropriate for the late 80s. And uh, all the intermodal equipment and uh, rolling stock that you see is, is basically uh, trying to be as, as uh, close to the years as possible. So I've got a few trains for you to run here. Uh, I'll try and narrate and show some of the, the new additions to the layout uh, since we did the last Facebook Live in terms of additions just up front. Uh, just again, a lot of, a lot of new weathering, a lot of new weathering techniques uh, are, have been kind of the main additions as well as uh, rolling stock and some other things. So with that, uh, we'll, get the, uh, we'll get the train started here and we'll start narrating. So from what it sounds like, I think we've got an uphill eastbound climbing up grade here. You can hear it down below grinding uphill about to pop through this tunnel in a couple seconds. We'll see what we have. And there it is, looks like an SP Manifest Freight. Yeah, big SP Drag Freight, four locomotives. You can see the lead unit on its upper headlight has the flashing oscillating lights. And then an SP Kodachrome engine from the aborted uh, Santa Fe uh, merger that never happened. Looks like a bunch of boxcars and lumber products here. Train coming down from the Pacific Northwest into the LA Basin. And you can see on some of the cars here, the various weather techniques. Check out some of the other videos that I have posted on both the Facebook and Instagram page. And you can see some of the techniques that I use. Mostly weathering powders, although I do use some acrylic paints as well. And there's the caboose. Train just short enough that it didn't pass under itself. 
but because it's a little shorter, it doesn't require mid-train or rear-end helpers like a lot of the Southern Pacific trains do on this pass. The four engines on this train are all made by Athern, a company out of California, longtime HO scale producer. Lead unit is a SD45R, rebuilt at the SP Sacramento shops, followed by an SD40T 2, another SD45R, and then an SD45T 2. Pretty good action here right off the bat. Looks like there's nothing behind him. As you can see, the signal bridge down the uh, down the hill here is showing a green. Obviously, uh, no no movement behind this guy, or the signal would probably have stayed red. So who knows? Maybe there's a, a westbound next as this train clears out here. We'll just have to wait. One thing to note: this big red box car that you see with the big SP white circle, 86 foot auto parts car. A uh, beautiful car made by tangent scale models in a very distinct Southern Pacific scheme. And then, as I mentioned, bringing up the rear here is very unique to SP uh, Bay Window Caboose. Again, by the early 90s, uh, cabooses were, were pretty much all replaced except for shoving platforms and switch moves by the flashing rear end devices. But it's the 80s today, and you see cabooses. So sit tight here and we'll, we'll see what is going to happen next. Should be another train here in a few minutes, always busy on Tehachapi.
All right, folks, well, we're back. As you can see, it looks like we've got a, a lineup here for westbound, like I had mentioned earlier. And actually, from the sound of it, it looks like it's just coming around the bend now. So it's going to be coming in the opposite direction here. Just about to pop on screen. Oh, look at that, we got a Santa Fe train. Oh, it looks like an intermodal. So this train represents an intermodal train from the 80s. As you can see, trailers, it does have a mix of trailers and containers, but this is before the era of double stacks. So double stacks were just starting to show up on the Southern Pacific down on the Sunset Route, but not on the Santa Fe yet. So you can see containers just on, on standard flat car equipment, as well as trailers on flat cars. And this is your basic Chicago to Bay Area train of the 80s of some sort. The Santa Fe engine's pulling the train. The first two are what they call cowl units. Full bodies, no walkways on the side. They're actually uh, former Amtrak engines that were purchased in the early 80s by the Santa Fe and turned into freight locomotives. First two engines, again, are built by Atherm. The third unit is an Intermountain SD40-2. And here it comes, about to take the signal at the bottom of the loop. That big horn. And you can see the intermodal equipment, 40 and 45 foot trailers and 40 and 20 foot containers, very appropriate for the period. And unlike the first train, this train does have a new flashing rear end device. A lot of intermodal trains were some of the first to have the, uh, the flashing rear end devices versus the caboose. And there you see it flashing on the rear of this train. And as it disappears, let's see uh, what happens next.
All right, everybody, I'm back. Thanks for your patience. From the radio traffic, it sounds like we've got two new eastbounds coming up the hill here. We'll see if the uh, signal on the main track here drops to red. You can see the yellow indication right now. It drops to red. We should be seeing a, an uphill eastbound pretty soon. Up, oh, you hear that? And the signals dropped to red, so we should be seeing a an uphill pretty soon. Judging on that horn, I'm gonna guess that this is another Santa Fe freight. But we shall see. Sounds like it's getting pretty close. And there it is, it is a Santa Fe. Santa Fe Freight Train. That oh, looks like a manifest train. Four yellow bonnets here, like I said, appropriate for the 80s. First two units are SD45-2s by Athern. And you've got a GP50, a four axle. Also by Athern, and then a Athern SD40. And a bunch of general merchandise freight behind this train. And there's that classic red Santa Fe caboose. You can see in the 80s especially, there was still a lot of the classic red super shock absorption boxcars. Just that beautiful red scheme that you see along with these classic blue and yellow engines. Trains headed for Barstow, California in the Santa Fe's big classification yard. Classic big horn there. And judging by the signal, again, drop into an approach, it looks like we, we may have another eastbound right behind this train.
We will just have to wait and see. See a lot of these red super shock control cars here. And the signal did drop to red, which indicates that it sounds like there's another train right behind him, and I can kind of hear him as well. I think you can just start hearing him down by Woodford right now, making his way up the hill. A lot of action going on today on Tatchby Loop in Illinois. Again, make sure you follow the Facebook page, Tatchby Loop in Illinois, and the same name on Instagram. We uh, have a good time, take a lot of photos, do a lot of how-tos, and just enjoy the hobby. But again, beautiful day here in the late 1980s to watch some freight trains. And it sounds like we're just about to hear this next eastbound and see it as it pops through the tunnel. There it is. So there's our second SP train. Again, you can see its oscillating top headlight combined with the regular headlight on the nose. The oscillating lights were used for better visibility, but were pretty expensive to maintain with that mechanism flashing back and forth, so they were replaced by rotary beacons and eventually ditch lights. Oh, and check this out. The third unit is painted in a special daylight paint scheme that the SP experimented with in the, in the early 1980s, trying to reminisce from the old SP Daylight Passenger Train colors of red and orange. That's SP 7342. From what we can tell, it lasted in those colors until about 1988. So again, that would be right on for the era that I'm trying to show you here on the layout. Looks like this is another classic SP lumber drag with boxcars and lumber from Northern California, Oregon, and also from Interchange Partner Burlington Northern and other parts of the Pacific Northwest that the SP picked up at their interchange in Portland. Just like the first SP manifest that we saw, this one also has a classic SP bay window caboose on the end. Out of these four units, uh, the first, second, and fourth engines are scale trains, SD40 T-2s. And then the third unit is a Athern SD40R, rebuilt at the Sacramento shops. And you can hear that classic SP tunnel motor Nathan P3 air chime here. Yeah. 
giving a toot of its horn to our viewers here. We can get a better look at the 7342. It was very dirty by 1988. And so I modeled it off of photos that I found of the real unit online to make it look as realistic as possible. And as you can see, a bunch of boxcars here, probably most likely filled with lumber. And other forest products. And you see some flat cars with uh, some lumber as well. You can see this white box car. This is another recent addition. Uh, Minnesota, Dakota, and Western car for Boise Cascade that I've painted up from photos and you can see some tutorials of that online. You see some covered hoppers, an acid tank car, some BM covered hoppers hauling sugar most likely some sort of flower, a gondola, more center beam forest products, and we got some classic box cars here, and then the SP Caboose. So all in all, pretty good action there. Four trains, three eastbound uphills, all manifests, and then a westbound Santa Fe hotshot to conclude our period for 1988. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I'll post this online. Ask any questions in the comments and we'll get back to you. Apologies that I didn't do a Facebook Live this time, but I hope you enjoyed. And we'll catch you next time on the Tatchby Loop in Illinois. Thanks a lot and take care.